So this is the final episode of Planet Earth 2 and it's about cities. So before I dive into the review of this episode, uh, as this is the final episode of Planet Earth 2 that I'll be reviewing, I'd like to open the floor to any suggestions for uh, or recommendations for uh, other series to do. Uh, there's quite a few series that the BBC or other networks have produced, so feel free to comment below which series you'd like me to talk about next, if any. Diving in to the final episode of Planet Earth 2, this episode is about cities. Like islands, this is a habitat that was not explored in Planet Earth. So we get to see a lot of things in this episode that we didn't see in Planet Earth. So, this episode opens up with Langors. So, Langors are a species of monkey that we see in India. They feature a lot in the sort of forests where we see tigers hunting deer quite a lot. They're the monkeys you see there normally. We see them just roaming around the city. We see this male defending his territories from this other, these other males. And that's, that's all fine. It's, you know, it's, I've seen stuff like that before. But it was, it was alright, and then uh, you see them in this garden where humans are just, you know, feeding them. It's a very nice, peaceful, tranquil uh, setting they've got going. It highlighted the connection that humans can have with nature. I think that was a very good way of opening that episode. After that we move on to New York City, where we see peregrines. Now peregrines uh, live at their highest density in the world in New York City because there's loads of pigeons. They actually did a really good job of explaining why there's so many peregrines. Like, they talk about the cities and mimic what their natural habitat would be like. The heat from the concrete is a very good, gives a, provides a good uh, updraft for thermals. And obviously there's loads of pigeons. And you see the peregrines hunting the pigeons. It's a really good hunt. We have seen peregrines hunting before. I don't know where this ranks in regards to uh, other peregrine hunts, but it's, it was pretty good. I liked it. It was a pretty good sequence. It was interesting seeing them driving the pigeons out to the open water to, to hunt them. That was really cool. I really liked that part. After that we move on to talk about... Uh, leopards in Mumbai. So in Mumbai leopards are living at their highest densities in the world which is quite impressive considering they're you know large animals. A peregrine you can you can understand that a leopard you would you would think there wouldn't be enough space in a, in a, a very populated part of the world like India. Um, but no, no they're living here in high numbers and that's because there's plenty of food whether they be stray dogs, pet dogs, wild pigs, there seems to be plenty there. People as well, they have do talk about humans getting attacked by leopards as well. But this sequence, we kind of see a lot of infrared sequences with the leopards going about, but then we switch to thermal imaging cameras. So that's a kind of sequence you don't see very often anymore. You saw it a lot, I think, back in the day, I think. I think when that kind of technology became available, they, they, they used it a lot. Uh, here you don't you don't see it you don't see it too much anymore. The thermal imaging actually helped I think create a ghostly setting. Like you really could see the leopards stalking the pigs, and you knew the, the pigs couldn't see them. And it was just it was just really it made it very haunting I think, uh, considering leopards just are I mean they're they're relatively big cats, but they don't they're not as big as a lion or a tiger by any means or a jaguar as we saw earlier in this series. But they they just are quite intimidating, and I think this this se uh, sequence did a very good job of showing you how intimidating leopards can be. And the sequence where they're just running with the pig and the pigs are chasing after them, that was really good as well. I thought that whole sequence was great. I, I really I really liked it. It was a very a very good highlight of the episode for me, I think. After that, we talk about starling murmurations, and uh, starling murmurations are pretty cool. I mean, they look good. If, you, if you've ever seen one uh, just outside, they are pretty mesmerising to watch. And this sequence was no different. It was very good. There wasn't much else to really say about it, but it was, it was quite good. After that, we talk about bowerbirds. Now, the bowerbird sequence is... is we've seen the sequence before and since. We saw it in Planet Earth 3. I think in that, my review of that sequence, I talked about how I feel like I'd seen it in another series. It was here. This was it. This was the series that I think I was talking about, because it's basically this male. Now, to be fair, they use things that uh, humans have left behind, whether they be bottle tops or toy cars, stuff like that, you know, the males are decorating their bowers with it. Another male comes along, disguised as a female, and then the males try to impress them, and it's like, oh, why is this female not being interested in this? Because it's a male. We've seen it before, we, we, we know what happens there. It's still fine, uh, I, I still thought it was an okay sequence, but I'd seen it before, I wasn't blown away by it, and uh, yeah, it was, it was alright, you know. After that we move on to raccoons. We see raccoons again, I think it's New York, it's a city in North America anyway, because that's predominantly where you find raccoons. Uh, and this is a very wholesome sequence. It's just this raccoon mother leading her, her cubs out to, you know, explore the city and they're, you know, they're going through people's gardens and one gets stuck there in an alley and has to crawl up the side. It's very nice. It wasn't, like, exciting or anything, but I, I liked it. I, I, it's the sort of sequence I think I would normally complain about being just, you know, we've seen it before, but here I was like, no, nah, it's nice. It's a nice little wholesome sequence. The natural world isn't a very nice place, it's a very cruel and unforgiving world I think, but 
sometimes you just get some things that are just nice and this sequence was one of those. After that we move to, I think it's Jaipur, I think it's somewhere in India again, where we see macaques, Reese's macaques. Now this was a sequence that Planet Earth 3 uh, sort of recreated and, and explored in more detail and I think I did prefer it in Planet Earth 3 but here it was great, the, you see the macaques just, just raiding people's, just stealing from people basically. It was really good just seeing them pinching people's pockets, taking their, their uh, bottles of juice and everything. It's fun. The music was also great. It was kind of very, very Bollywood, I think. It was just very good. I thought it was a very, uh, again, as I keep saying, the music makes the sequences in this series a lot of the time. And uh, this was a sequence where the music definitely added to it. But no, it was really good. I really, I really liked it. Very, uh, very uh, Slumdog Millionaire, I thought. But after that, we move on to a different, very different kind of setting. And that was Ethiopia, where we see hyenas. Hyenas are not an animal you'd expect to see in a city. We see these two clans battling it out for, for, for something, we don't know what yet. Uh, and we see that the winning clan gets to then explore the city. Uh, and in that we see them just patrolling the streets. We don't really know where they're going, uh, but then we see them go to this ancient meat market where they just discard the bones and the hyenas eat, basically eat the bones, basically. It's really cool watching the guy just looks like he's bricking it as he's like, oh, the hyenas here. And uh, the hyenas are just licking their lips at him. It's a very well shot sequence, very well edited, I think, to make you think, oh no, the hyenas are going to maybe attack the guy. But no, it's a very good sequence. And once more than that, you then see the hyenas uh, moving on to this other guy. I can't remember his name now. Um, but he basically hand feeds them. And they almost act like dogs, basically. They're just like, he's petting the hyenas. His kids are there. You know, it's, it's very, again, very, very disconcerting to see because hyenas, as Adam says in the sequence, are very vilified. We don't normally see them being portrayed very well. Uh, they're not necessarily the good guys very often. But I had seen this behaviour before in uh, Deadly 60, I think. But it was really cool to see it here, a different kind of, you know, calibre of filmmaking, obviously. No disrespect to Deadly 60, I had a lot of fun with it when I was younger, but this is a different kettle of fish. I really liked it, it's a very good sequence. It's quite wholesome, but it's also very unnerving at times, the way the hyenas are kind of, you know, the way they're portraying, the way they're patrolling the streets. I thought it was really good, yeah, not a lot of complaints on that one. Yeah, after that we move on to, I think it's somewhere in Europe, I think it's Italy, where we see loads of pigeons. Now pigeons, again, we've seen in New York, they're getting attacked by uh, peregrines, but I uh, know in Italy, or wherever they are, here they're getting attacked by a very different kind of predator, and that was a catfish. Not an animal I expected to see hunting pigeons, but that sequence was probably the most unexpected, I think. I think a lot of things in this episode I'd seen or had heard of before. This, I had absolutely no clue. So the pigeons are all coming down to the water to, to, to drink, and they stress how the Nothing's hunting the pigeons, so they're kind of, you know, they, there's no nothing to fear. Uh, and these catfish, which, again, they're kind of scary, the way they portray them. The way they film it, it's like a crocodile hunting wildebeest, which is, I think, was deliberate. And it's very good. It's just a great sequence. You see the pigeons getting attacked by the, the catfish. They're getting dragged into the water. The catfish just, they describe how the catfish just went from bottom feeding freshwater fish to these, you know, predators of pigeons. It's a really good sequence. I didn't expect it. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, it was just, it, it, it definitely it stuck with me, I think, from this episode, and it's very good. After that, we talk about how, you know, cities are everywhere, the lights are everywhere, um, but it, it does a good job of, you know, shooting around, you know, of, of showing you really quick camera movements around areas like subways and city lights. Uh, not as good as the one in Planet Earth 3, but to be fair, it did come out after it, so you stand to reason that they would try and improve on certain things. But no, it's still great. And then we talk about the negative effects. We don't hear a lot about the negative effects of humans in this episode. We do focus on animals that have learned to adapt to humanity. Here we see a glimpse of animals that haven't. And these are sea turtles. Sea turtles are an animal that is very easy to get behind, particularly their hatchlings. So we see the hatchlings and because they usually follow the moon to the sea, that's how they normally tell in the dark. Uh, here they follow the lights because the lights are brighter than the moon, obviously. Into the, the towns and the cities, uh, they're getting attacked by crabs which have learned to um, make the S onto the lights because the turtles will pass them and it's really sad the turtles are getting stuck in drains it's really strongly implied that a lot of them will die and a lot of them probably do there are almost certainly people out there that will collect them and put them back to the sea but they're going to miss quite a lot of them uh, it's a very good sequence I've seen that before in, in toads I did toad patrol a few years ago and I uh, was collecting toads because they will follow the light uh, they, they expect to see the light from the moon or the ponds and it's actually just street lights they're following uh, so it's really, it does, it's, it's way, quite wide ranging, a lot of animals do this, and it's really good, again, it's quite sad, it's probably, I mean, it is easily the saddest part of this series, I think, it's the saddest thing since Islands, uh, but instead of depressing you like a lot of the things that that episode did, it's just, it kind of hits home that something needs to be done, I think. And after that we, we explore, again, the kind of 
positive impacts that humans are having in the natural world. I, uh, areas where people are rewilding cities, like in Singapore is the is the biggest example where we see they've made these big like artificial trees, they've planted climbers up them, birds are coming back, there's otters in the rivers. It's just really good. I think Singapore looks like they're kind of way ahead of the way ahead of everyone else in regards to rewilding their cities and obviously there's a push for that in, in other places like there I know in Britain there's like a push to have green roofs a lot of new buildings have to have them I don't know how, how that is across the world but it's definitely a thing that a lot of people are, are aware of now and I thought that was a great way to end it because I think a lot of these, these times a lot of times series do tend to end things in a negative way like and I, I think while that is very effective I think it's very good at highlighting that something needs to be done it doesn't always leave you feeling hopeful which in order to make a difference you kind of do need hope and I think this episode did a lot of did that, it kind of showed you examples where things had worked and then went right, everyone else could do that I think that was a really good decision to end it that way after that we see the making of, and it's basically everything in India we see the guys with the macaques, that was fine the bit with Gordon Buchanan's film and the, in, the leopards that was really cool, I really liked that because the leopard scene was, was probably one of the ones I wanted to see how they filmed it and we see, we see glimpses of it, we see him putting camera traps out and the hides waiting for them, the leopard comes right up to him, that was really cool. Yeah, I mean, he's a, a filmmaker that's quite, he's one of the celebrity filmmakers, I think, he's, he's kind of presenter as well. He's great, Gordon Buchanan, he's always great. I've seen him uh, live once, he was, he was good then. I think he's one of the better guys out there, I think. Good guy, also representing uh, Scotland, which is always a, always a positive with my book. And then we see the guys with the langars, and it's, it seemed to be quite a good experience for them, just just with them, you know, people feeding, they're feeding them. It just seemed nice, yeah, I think it was good. So yeah, overall this episode is good. I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, it's better than the last one anyway. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot in here to like. I think highlights, I mean, I think the leopard's probably the highlight, but the hyenas were great. The catfish and the pigeons were great. I mean, the macaques I liked. I I, I liked most of the things to be honest. The turtles are obviously great. It's a nice way of ending the series as well with the, the stuff in Singapore. Yeah, overall it was just a really good, really good episode. Again, I think the best one was still Deserts. And I think this series overall is is really good. I don't know if it's one of the best ones in my opinion. That's probably a bit controversial because this series is beloved. Um, I don't think it's as good as Planet Earth. I don't know how it compares to Planet Earth 3. I would need to ruminate on that and rewatch Planet Earth 3, I think. Uh, I think most episodes have a lot of good stuff in there. There's great stuff in every episode. Uh, there's no episodes where I thought, oh, that was a complete waste of time. But there's definitely a prevalence in many episodes to have a lot of filler. I think there's a few episodes which have more filler than you would probably like. But, hey, there's still great stuff. Desert's episode was amazing. This episode was amazing. The Mountains episode had a lot of stuff in it. Yeah, it was just it's just some episodes had had, had, a bit, uh, had a little bit too much filler, I think. But overall, it's still really good. Uh, it's still, you know, a milestone in wildlife filmmaking. And it's definitely worth your time. Obviously, as I've said uh, already, I this is the last episode of Planet Earth 2. I will be doing a top 10 list of the best moments, like I did with Planet Earth 3. Uh, that'll be uh, next week. And after that, uh, as I say, feel free to let me know what series you'd like me to look at next. I am open to virtually anything. Ideally stuff that's on BBC iPlayer, so it's easier for me to watch. But, hey, I'm open to anything. Um, yeah, and as ever, uh, feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, as ever, you don't have to. It's very much appreciated, uh, but I'm not going to force you to because I'm not one of those people. But anyway, um, see you next week and uh, goodbye.